In this video, we're going to do a trailer tour, just quickly going over everything and showing how everything works. Be sure to check out our deep dive video to see this trailer constructed from start to finish. Here we start off with the battery wall. I have my stealth mounts for the batteries, so they're all lock in place. I have um, the tool mounts on this side, so I have two inverters, so when I do my time lapse, I hook up the batteries to these. Moving down, I have my Festool batteries for my track saw, and then obviously chargers. All of these are plugged in behind this wall. Um, and then I have an outlet here for in the future, if we're working on something or we need to run an extension cord, I have um, a AC and DC. So one is if we're plugged into the house, um, we run an extension cord to the house. The other one is hooked on two batteries in the front of the trailer. So if we're in the middle of somewhere and we don't have power, at least we have power in the trailer. Behind this block here, I have um, all the cords and everything for the chargers plugged into the outlets. This shelf is removable, so the whole thing can come out so I can have access to that down the road if I ever need to. Um, and here I have my track saw, some extra blades and attachments, my Festool Impact, and then I have my Milwaukee Packouts. These are deeper, so they won't fit in the front one. Um, so these are what we're gonna put all of our head locks and ledger locks and everything in. And then all the way at the bottom is uh, I have my Bosch Transit. All my nail guns are battery, except for two. I have a um, roofing nailer, coil nailer, and then I have my Joyce Hanger nailer. Um, those are the only two air guns I have. And then I have a little pneumatic uh, palm nailer as well. In this bin, I have my um, M12 bandsaw, my planer, a small M12 circular saw, and then I have two rear handle worm saws. And then working our way down, so the bottom one is all M12s, and then this middle row is all uh, M18s. So I have a drywall cutout tool, router, Multimax, whole hog, grinder, sawzall, sander, handheld flashlights, and a jigsaw. Here I have the M12 Multimax, 3 8 ratchet, riveting tool, um, rotor tool, 90, battery palm nailer, small hacksaw, I have two um, M12 drills. I have a impact behind me. I have my battery pin nailer, my pipe cutter, and my copper cutter. I have all my tools in the bins up top, and then beneath it, I have the uh, slightly modified Ron Polk. Um, drawers so I'll have a, a, a video on how to build these um, but basically there's a notch right here that when this is pushed in it locks it into place because obviously in the trailer we're gonna be driving around we don't want them to open so you just do a little lift up this is my tape drawer this is my bit drawer this is a staple drawer these are all my siding tools. I have just kind of miscellaneous, we gotta clean this up, but miscellaneous nails and stuff like that. Um, wrenches and sockets. Um, vacuum, Craig. All my blades, sawzalls, diamond blades, drills, big drill bits. My drywall, tape, spackle. 
I didn't build any cubbies here because I wanted to leave this open for potential add-ons, pack outs, tools, whatever the case may be. Um, the other option is, is doing like a little breakfast thing, having a microwave or a coffee machine. So um, this area is to be determined, but at least I have the ability to expand when I'd like. This is the front of the trailer. Um, I wanted to come up with a way to easily access the tools that we use the most, but also not take up storage. So. I came up with this little wheel idea. So it has two wheels on the bottom that ride along this track. And every tool has a stealth mount. So they lock in place. So as you can see, there's nothing fancy to it. It just slides right on, slides right off. So I have my half inch impact, three eighths, 30 degree nailer. 15 gauge, 18 gauge crown, and 18. Behind it, I have uh, my rolling pack outs. So um, only when we're doing like a big deck job or whatever, we pull those out to uh, bring, because we need a lot of tools. So this slides and blocks those in. Moving over up top, I have the uh, tripod for my transit and all my levels. Beneath it, I have two small pack outs that have all of our bits, so our T25s, Phillips, stuff like that. Um, hole saws, pack out light, pack out back, and they're all locked in place here, so they're not going anywhere. Um, I'm gonna do the same process for this miter saw, but for right now, it's just sitting in there. Um, this is the seven and quarter, so when I'm doing smaller stuff or trim, this thing is super light and awesome. Then sliding this over, I have my caulk on, which I do have. So this is the 10 ounce one. I do have the attachment to make it for the bigger tube. So we can do retaining walls and um, a lot of subfloor or whatever. And we want the bigger caulk tubes. We use that one. Um, heat gun, two regular hammer drills two surge impacts and this is my 21 degree framing nailer goes there but a buddy of mine's borrowing that right now so again it's it's nice to have the storage behind it but yet have access to all the tools so i wanted these tools to be closest to the door because we use them the most often so they're just quick easy grab and go moving over i have the stealth mount feet on on the top of this radio so um, it easily comes in and out, but it's locked in place when we're driving. On the side, I can put a battery if I wanted to play music, or it has a cable that I can plug into the inverter. Right here, I just have my basic pack out crate. So when we're ready to go, we just, if it's a smaller job, we just grab whatever we need, throw it in this, and then bring it to the house. I have my, um, pack out radio or my um, little radio so uh, just grab these throw it in there and go down here I have a trickle charger and um, a jump start and I have two deep cycle marine batteries which are connected to the inverter so the inverter has a ground which is connected to the trailer and it has a fuse which is connected to the batteries. So if we are ever, um, for example, right now, we're not, we don't have any power, we're in a parking lot, I have power at all times, which are run off of the batteries. Then when we have a chance, we run the extension cord on the front of the trailer to a house, and that is when powers this up and it will charge the batteries for us. Now on the front of the trailer, there's an outlet, which is, goes to that outlet. That outlet goes to the GFI. So all the outlets in the trailer are GFI protected. And below that, I just have more storage. On the side here, I have some framing squares and some speed squares that I just built a little holders for. So they're not locked in place. All I do is just lift up and they come right out. So. Um, pretty simple design this one goes that way over here I have um, 
all of our for the most part all of our screws and nuts and bolts and stuff that we use every day so what I did was every other one is fixed and then um, the other ones just pull out so if we just need to grab one or a screw or something like that it's easily accessible and then I also put a little block of wood here so that it latches in place so when we're driving they can't go anywhere because they're locked in place on the door here this is still kind of a work in progress I want to put tape measures and pencil holders and stuff but for right now I just have a four inch pipe for my blower and just a simple hook for my tool belt I just have a little cubby here to hold my pack out or my um, tower lights I have the magnetic Milwaukee light as well just easily accessible and then in the back I have the Milwaukee backpack vacuum so this just is magnetic up to the ceiling and these are just bungee corded in um, beneath it I just have a little, another little cubby for the M18 fan on top of this I have obviously a pack out so here I have my air compressor. All I did was bolt it down to one of these platforms. So all we do is lock it in place so when we're driving it doesn't go anywhere. I have the bottom part screwed into that. So again, these aren't going anywhere unless we lift up the tab. Moving over here, I have my table saw. Same thing. Um, from what I found was a little wider than I liked. So I put a three quarter inch piece of plywood and screwed that to the platform. So again, it locks in place. Same thing with the miter saw. We have the platform. And again, we have all these lock into place. All we do is push it back and they're not going anywhere. On this wall, I have um, my Festool tracks. So I have two of these sizes with the joiner. So if I want to make it longer, um, here I have the 8 foot and I have an 8 foot level. Um, now I just made these out of 3 quarter inch plywood. They do sell um, holders for them and for the levels as well but this was free so all I do is just lift that up. This comes right out and same with the track. All I do is just lift up and they come right out and then they sit down like that so it works for me um, for the most part I'm by myself so I take good care of it if I had a bunch of guys coming in and out of here I'd probably get the holders for them. Moving on to the back of the trailer over here I have um, my Ron Polk workbench um, I have some foam in there so this is four feet so I can get plywood or drywall or whatever in there if I wanted um, but for the most part we just use the truck um, over here I have my uh, saw horses, so they just slide right in, slide right out. Um, I have my painting drawer, uh, my electrical drawer, and my deck drawer. This has like all my camo stuff in it and joist hangers. So what's cool about these are they pull all the way out. I have uh, a three quarter inch plywood and just a dado over here. So there's no hardware to it. Obviously, there's no handles to it. Um, it just slides in and out very easily. The only thing that's slightly different about these drawers are there is no notch here. And the reason I did that was, one, because of the weight of them. They really don't slide. But also because when the door's closed, it's tight up against it. So they don't slide anywhere. So these are the only drawers in the whole trailer that you don't have to lift up. All you do is just pull right out and they're not going anywhere. I have three sources of electrical in this trailer. Um, I have the battery, I have my truck when the trailer's plugged in, and then obviously we have the electrical cord on the front of the trailer that we can plug into a client's house. So back here, I just put a simple switch that controls the battery lights all the way around. What we do is if we wanted just quick power, we just flip that switch and all the lights come on. Now moving to the front of the trailer. This is the factory switch with when I got the trailer. 
So when you turn that on, this switch controls only when the truck is running. Um, it does the lights above. This switch is a three-way, which is tied to the one behind the miter saw. So same thing. When I flip that, all the LEDs up top and all the lights on the back. So this switch is currently run on the inverter. This is run on the truck. The lights came with a little remote. If I wanted to have some fun, I can change the color of the backdrop lights and make them Milwaukee red. This is how we plug in. We pull this out to the client's house and plug it in, which charges all the batteries and everything inside. Um, and then lastly, I have a walkable roof. So um, we have ladders and stuff up there. All we do is walk up here and get whatever we need on top. Be sure to like and follow us on Instagram. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see other videos like this one and many more.